G'day folks, Rod here, hope you're all well. Um, haven't heard from you for too much over the last month or two. So I just thought I'd give you an update of what I've been painting, what I've been doing and so on. Um, I was a bit ill for a few weeks and uh, that sort of slowed me down. And I uh, just had absolutely no energy at all. So I think I had some sort of virus or something, but um, certainly put the handbrake on things for a while. But anyway, I'm all good now. And uh, I think my lens is a little bit dirty. Sorry about that. That's a bit better. Um, so I just thought I'd give you a bit of an update and, uh, and ask, you know, wonder if you ever have the same problem I do, you know, what are you going to paint next? And, um, this is, I think a pretty frequent sort of challenge for, uh, most artists deciding what on earth to paint next. And, uh, I've, I've got to that sort of rut recently, you know, after you've painted, I don't know, maybe I've painted a thousand or more paintings over the last six years or so. Uh, so you do tend to get to a point where you go, well, what, what on earth am I going to paint next, right? <laughs> where to from here? And, um, and I don't know about you, but sometimes you get a bit stuck with the style that you're painting and you wonder, is that the right style? Am I going in the right direction? Um, how much more of this do I want to paint? So I, I think every artist goes through that. And um, I, because I, I got a bit ill and, and ran out of energy, um, for probably it was probably more like about three or four weeks after I came back from Capity Valley. I uh, just had no energy and, um, and also couldn't work out what I was going to paint next. So I got a bit stuck. Um, but anyway, past that now and uh, I just thought I'd give you a little video on what I do um, to try and break out of that rut of not knowing what to paint next. So one of the first things that I do is I collect tons and tons of photos everywhere I go. I take photos. So because I paint a lot of landscape and seascape, um, whenever I'm out in a landscape or a seascape, I take photos, right? So I've got this huge photo library and um, I highly recommend that everyone do the same. And I don't think you necessarily need to paint you know, every photo that you take or necessarily turn every photo, you know, even if you take a good photo, you don't necessarily need to turn that into a painting, but you can use it as inspiration. And this is the direction I've been heading with my own painting um, over the last year or two years is to really draw inspiration from the landscape and seascape and all the photos that I've collected and also just being out in, in nature as much as I possibly can, but draw inspiration from that and then really do my own interpretation of it. So more moving towards more of an abstract sort of approach. So just recently trying to get out of this funk that I was in, um, not knowing what to paint, I, uh, I thought I'd just put aside any ideas of what I thought I should paint, right? Should I do another landscape? Should I do another, you know, forget all those ideas and just pick up a brush sometimes. And this is what I've just been doing. Pick up a brush sometimes and just don't think about it. Just put paint on canvas and just see where it takes you right and um and the inspirations that you already have within you will come out to the surface i believe now sometimes that works out sometimes it doesn't it's all just part of the experience of being an artist and painting right so um that's one of the things that i've been doing to, to sort of break free from this eternal question of what am i going to paint next and then the other thing is i'm um, trying a brand new subject and i'll show you what i mean by that in a moment um I've always been drawn to want to paint florals, but I've never really felt that it was the right thing for me to paint, which is a mindset thing, right? You should never think that. But we all get into that. Every artist, I think, sort of gets stuck in a groove of what they think they should paint and what they shouldn't. Um, so my mum sent me a photo recently of uh, some flowers in a vase, and um, I thought, I'll have a go at that. You know? and, and, I, and I think uh, a lot of you have seen it on my Facebook page. I posted that yesterday yesterday. Um, little painting I did for my mum and asked you to want me to do that in the Learn to Paint Club and a pretty positive response. So thank you everyone who responded. So that's what I've been doing to try and break out of, you know, that sort of eternal question of what am I going to paint next? So I'll just show you some of the things that I've just been playing around with just for the, the sheer joy of pushing paint around, right? So let me just turn this camera around. There we go. There's my messy garage. So I've just been painting another thing I dislike about painting. It's the cleaning up. <laughs> so um, this is my palette. So uh, those of you who have been going through our, you know, learn to paint courses and so on, you'll know that I keep a really simple palette um, of just three colours primarily. But when I'm painting for myself, I expand it out. So I have a uh, yellow ochre, cad yellow, cad red, alizarin crimson. I like my blues. So I have cerulean blue, which is the cool blue, cobalt blue, ultramarine blue, Burt Sienna and Viridian. And um, from that range of colors, I can mix up, you know, all sorts of different uh, colors and tones. 
through there. So, um, and titanium white, of course. And one thing I'm doing, this is oils, and I'm painting in here. So when I paint for myself, I mostly paint in oils. One thing I do to clean that up is I scrape it all off with a palette knife, and I keep it all in muddy puddles here. And then I use that for my darks and my greys, um, that muddy paint. So I don't waste that. So you can do that with oils. A little bit harder with acrylics, or almost impossible with acrylics in this weather here. Um, and you can see my paint brushes there. So cleaning up's not my strong point. <laughs> uh, anyway, so I said my mum sent me this photo, so that's uh, I thought I'll have a go at that, um, and I think it turned out okay. It's probably the first floral that I've done really. Uh, I think that one turned out okay, and, and I appreciate everyone's positive feedback and comments. It was very uh, pretty, but an overwhelming response in the yes. Um, category for us doing that as a learn to paint club exercise so i did that in oils but i think that'll translate okay in acrylics and so this is another one um, this is this week's episode of learn to paint tv it's going to be out soon and that's just a little corner of mum's um, kitchen when i was down there i snapped a whole lot of photos don't tell her um, <laughs> and uh, just painted a little corner of my kitchen right um, so that's going to be this week's uh Learn to paint TV. Great little beginner painting. You know, it's not designed to be an advanced painting. It's designed for those who, you know, if, if you if you haven't done 500 paintings yet, then have a go at this one, right? And, and this one will simplify that down for next week. So they're, they're the coming episode of Learn to Paint TV. But let me show you what I, I've just been doing, as I said before, is like sometimes just pick up a brush and just let the paint fall where it lands, you know, without even thinking about it. Hey Maria, welcome. Thank you. I love painting as well. <laughs> so we have that in common. Um, but here's a couple of little seascapes. And one of the things that I wanted, I, you know, I've been thinking about is, do I need to push more colour and um, make my paintings more colourful? So that's what I've been doing. And, and you know, there was very little thought at all gone into these. Obviously, I've painted lots of landscapes in the past, um, but I was really not interested in painting a perfect painting. But brush marks, colour, texture. They were more and mood, mood and atmosphere is my big thing with painting. Um, so you know, rather than trying to paint a realistic beach scene, I'm moving more in that abstract impressionist sort of style, where what I'm really trying to capture is mood. You know, if you look at that one, it's like this sunlight bursting into life at the start of the day. That's the sort of thing I want to capture. I don't want to necessarily paint beaches and waves and so on. Um, so that's some of the things I've been playing around with. Thank you, Sue. Appreciate that. Hope you're well. Joan, been stuck in the same place and have also painted florals and now toying with palette knife. Well, this is basically what I'm doing, Joan. These are both, have a look at the palette knife marks in there, right? Um, you know, sometimes changing up the tools that you use can really, uh, well, there's brush and, and palette knife in there, but just changing the tools. You know, if you're always painting with brush, then, um, then, then try the palette knife, you know. That's what I did recently. Uh, there's a little landscape. That one I wasn't so happy with. It's a bit murky. And there's a smaller version of that flower painting that I did for my mum, right? Um, so that sort of gave me a bit of a fresh inspiration. And then, you know, I was sitting in my office before and um, doing stuff on the computer. And I thought, oh, I really feel like painting. So I came out and, again, just with the approach of not even going to think about it, not, not going to try and paint something you know, necessarily just going to put paint down. And sometimes, you know, things just work out. This is a little one. Actually, this one I did have something in mind. That was Malulabar Beach uh, with the rocks there and the waves crashing out of the rocks. So I had a little bit of a plan with that one or a bit of a thought in mind anyway. And then I thought I'll get even more abstract. Um, this one was inspired by, um, well, actually this one and the next one, inspired by driving through Mullaney and Montville um, in, in the hinterland here and these rolling hills and sort of moody atmosphere so anyway i uh hope that helps someone um if you're getting stuck with what to paint you know collect lots of reference material try new things like um the florals and the interiors is new for me try new techniques and new new uh new tools like the palette knife and so on um it certainly helps me to sort of get 
you know, if you ever get stuck not knowing what to paint, what happens is you tend to stop painting, right? And I think that's the worst thing that you can do because you lose your inspiration. So um, just try doing anything, you know, and, and putting paint down just for the sheer joy of it, moving paint around. And, and sometimes you go, oh, I like that style, you know. You can see there are flicked paint in there, which I never do, <laughs> but I see other artists do it. So I thought, oh, I'll try flicking paint in there, right? Um, this sky here, this sort of moody cloud and the sunlight, that's all done with palette knife, right? So try new things and get out of your own way. Stop thinking about it so much is one of the big lessons for me. Um, you know, I overthink things, so it shows in your painting. And when you just detach that conscious mind and just allow it to flow from your unconscious, great things can happen. Anyway, hope that helps. Look forward to talking to you all soon. Enjoy your painting and uh, cheers for now.